So what we're going to do is show you a few programs. I'm going to start off with a program called Studio Paint and show some of the user interface issues there. Now the first thing you're going to notice in the demonstration is that the artist, Daniel Hornick, is using two devices, two hands. In his right hand, he's got a stylus. It's a very conventional thing with which he draws. Now the thing that's maybe more interesting is in his left hand, he's holding a puck. Now the purpose of holding a puck is sort of analogous to if you're working with a piece of paper, that you can actually hold the paper in one hand while you draw with the other. So away you go. So we're trying to model in the computer world precisely what we do in the everyday world. Now, we can see this in the terms of Wild Daniel's drawing, that he can literally grab the electronic page by depressing one of the buttons on his left hand and pull the page around. Now, this not only means that it's closer to what he does every day in paper, but it also means he's not having to move his hand out to the edge of the screen and use the scroll bars and the scroll arrows that dominate most conventional graphical user interfaces. The interface comes to him. It's in his hand. He doesn't have to go off to the edge to find it. Now, one of the first things that you notice when you're working with a computer is how small the computer screen is compared to a large sheet of paper. And yet, that very same screen is too often just covered with user interface widgets. What you'll notice here is that the screen is really clear for the artwork. And that we've taken a lesson from Rembrandt and Van Gogh. That is to say, we're holding our palette in our left hand, but it's only visible when you need to draw something out of it. So by pushing a button on his left hand puck, up pops the palette, and you can choose your tool or widget by just dipping your brush in it. And like any other palette, you can mix your colors or put whatever you want into it. And when you're finished with it, it disappears. Things are only exposed when it's legal to select from them. The rest of the time, you have a clear sheet to draw on. Now sometimes you do need widgets um, to control a brush shape or something like that. And that's fine, they're easily accessible. By double clicking on the tool in the widget, up comes the panel that controls it. So you can bring up the controller to control a brush thickness or a brush color. What you'll notice though, that if these widgets or windows are displayed in the screen, at least they don't completely obscure your work. Because it, you'll notice that as you paint, you can paint underneath them. Because all of the parts that aren't essential are semi-transparent. So you can see your work. So if you must have it, at least minimize the detraction to your work and your work habit. And when you want to get rid of them, you can just click a button and things disappear and away you go, you've got a clean screen again. So through the magic of video, we've leapt ahead in time and what you can notice is that the artwork that Daniel's been doing has advanced a lot since uh, the last cut. Now, the point here is that what's clearly seen in the drawing is that he knows how to draw. He's gone to art school. Throughout all of our software, we want to make sure that the limiting factor is your artistic ability and not your ability as a computer programmer or as a computer expert. The artist rules. Now, some people could interpret this as saying what we want to do is make the computer really easy to use. And that's not the point. If ease of use was the issue, the piano or even the watercolor brush would be obsolete. What's of importance here is expertise. And what we want to do, really, is accelerate the process whereby the novice computer user becomes an expert computer user, but we assume that they're expert artists. Now, one of the techniques that we use to do this is called marking menus. Now, marking menus are like the linear menus that you've seen in every other graphical user interface. What's different is that marking menus let you make a selection by the direction you go, the radial menus. So if Daniel goes around and around, you can see the different selections highlighted. This is because you're wired to be able to distinguish between north, south, east, and west, and you can do that with your eyes closed. What you can't do with your eyes closed is make a selection from a linear menu, and therefore your eyes, which belong in the artwork, are sucked up by the user interface. So with these radial menus, we can select from a thing and even have a submenu. And so Daniel went off to the right and up, and selected the hide function so he can hide parts of his artwork. But now what he can do is click down and go to the right and then down and he gets the show and he can reveal that which he just hid. Now we can do this more slowly. If we go down slowly and wait, up comes the menu. Waits, comes the next one, down to show. So the motion is across to the right and down to select the show function. But he can do the same thing by doing a quick stroke and he gets through a shorthand gesture the same action. 